Our keynote speaker of the day is Reverend Father Joaquim Loyola Pereira. He was ordained priest in Benauli in 1976. From 1980 to 1987, he was a prefect and teacher at the Seminary of Our Lady at Saligaon, Milan, where he was the musical director of the seminary choir. From 1987 to 1993, he was an assistant parish priest at Lutoli, where he directed the Saviour Rites of Lutoli, a prize-winning choir of the time. From 1993 to 2008, he served two terms as a director of the Diocesan Center for Social Communications Media. What is interesting for those who love Konkani hymns is, he has composed melodies for more than 30 Konkani hymns and has many choral arrangements to his credit. He is the secretary to the Archbishop of Goa and Daman from 1996 till date, a member of the Diocesan Commission for Sacred Music and a member of the Committee for Formation in Liturgical Music. I invite Father Joachim Laoela Pereira to deliver the keynote address. Cardinal Ferrao, the chief guest, Reverend Father Pedro Rodriguez, superior of the Goa province of the Jesuits, the guest of honor, Dr. Panduram Thaldesai, the director of the TSKK, Reverend Father Kelvin Montero, the conference convener and the superior of this Jesuit campus. My dear Jesuit friends, Ladies and gentlemen, I have been honored enormously by the invitation I received to deliver the keynote address at this prestigious national conference on the contributions of the Goan Christian musicians to the musical heritage of Goa, organized by the Thomas Stevens Konkni Kendra on the occasion of this their special Silver Jubilee. I must confess that I do not hold any academic degrees in music which would legitimize my occupying that chair. I reckon that a number of you listening to me have them. There are, however, two very simple reasons for my accepting this honor that was given to me this morning. One, the unshakable faith that the convener of the conference, Reverend Father Kelvin Montero, has on my ability to deliver the goods. A faith I don't share with him, <laughs> but which I would not dare to challenge. And two, my long-standing and deep love for the music of our land, more specifically, for what has come to be known as the Christian musical heritage of this beautiful place, Goa. So, where do I start? And how do I proceed? I must confess that when I asked myself these questions, I was sort of paralyzed for long moments, which went into long days of sheer blankness. For I realized that the time that I was allotted to speak this morning was abysmal, abysmally inadequate to deal with the topic given to me. That is, to kind of evaluate the contribution of Goan Christian musicians to our musical heritage. The picture is simply too big. I would perhaps need 20 minutes or more only to read out the names of all those who have made a contribution big or small, to this larger-than-life, larger-than-size canvas that portrays Goan Christian musicians 
and the works they have created, and the genres that they have explored, and the groups they have formed or been part of, and the books they have written, and the great musical productions they have created, and the media they have used to disseminate these productions, etc., etc., etc. The scope of my address, therefore, is going to be rather limited. I shall first explore what I believe is the root and the main trunk of this mighty tree, or rather, of the unique heritage that Goan Christian musicians are so proud of and so enthusiastic at promoting wherever they are placed. I will then briefly touch upon some of the branches of this tree, that is, the main genres of music that Goan, mus uh, that Goan Christians have cultivated and continue to cultivate with great success. I shall refrain as far as possible from naming individuals and groups that contributed to the development of our great musical heritage. Thankfully, we have a lineup of very knowledgeable music researchers who will do that job. Till the end of the day, they will speak with legitimate authority on their given subjects and keep you engaged and engrossed in this beautiful celebration of the enduring legacy of Goa's Christian musicians brought to us by the Thomas Stevens Company Kin. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an undeniable fact that this tiny state on the western coast of India has produced an astonishing array of musical talent, influencing genres and styles far beyond its geographical boundaries. Rooted in a rich blend of Indian and Western musical heritage, Goan Christian musicians have carved out a unique niche for themselves in the global music landscape. The contributions of these musicians span various genres, from classical music to traditional folk and theater songs, and from church music to modern pop and jazz. Goan Christian singers have enthralled audiences worldwide, singing in Konkani, Hindi, English, Portuguese, and other European and even African languages. What is the secret of such versatility and multifaceted impact of their music on the global music scene? It is undoubtedly the fact that they imbibed like few others, a distinctive blend of Indian and Western cultures along the last five centuries. I said quite deliberately Indian and Western cultures in that order. Because the soul, the soul of a Goan Christian has its origins in its Indian past. And here I invite you to have a look at the root of the tree. The music that Goans cultivated in this land before the historic arrival of the Portuguese in 1510 was Indian music taught in the Patsharas or elementary schools attached to the Hindu temple. This was the indigenous and mostly religious musical culture that the Portuguese conquerors found in this place when they landed here at the beginning of the 16th century. And they liked what they saw. Thankfully, the new European lords of Goa took note of the rich elementary educational tradition that already existed in this land and did not waste time in adopting it and making it their own. A very important factor in this assimilation came, quite providentially, in the form of a royal decree of King John III of Portugal, dated March 8, 1545, issued therefore in mid-16th century, mandating that every parish church in Goa should have 
an elementary school attached to it to see to the religious, secular, and musical education of the young. We find here, therefore, a felicitous meeting between an existing educational system in the East, which served as an immediate model for the implementation of, of a decree issued by a king from the West. Indeed, a beautiful point de rencontre, a meeting point between East and West. And so we have, right in the middle of the 16th century, temples and their attached patsharas being replaced by churches and their attached parish schools or Shkolish parochias. All this to say that almost five centuries ago, the parish school or the Shkola parochial in Goa became the cradle of an educational system that would, in the years and centuries to come, produce real luminaries in letters, in science, and, not to forget, in music. Music was taught mainly to train singers and musicians to sing and play in church. Therefore, along with the solfeggio or musical notation, students were taught to memorize masses, Latin masses in Gregorian chant. After mastering a few masses from the Graduale Romanum, which is the official songbook of worship of the Catholic Church, the student would be admitted to lessons in violin, in organ, or in any wind instrument. With the passage of time, especially in the 17th and 18th centuries, Students of parish schools were already expected to know how to read and write music at a much higher level and to play several instruments. And those gifted with special talent would be admitted for lessons in harmony and composition. Yes, lessons in harmony and composition in the elementary church schools of Goa. We are now looking at Goa's main parish churches, not to mention seminaries and colleges of the various religious orders, the Jesuit College of St. Paul in the first place. All these had well-established polyphonic choirs and orchestras, which performed masses, motets, and other sacred music compositions by Palestrina, Bach, Handel, Mozart, Schubert, and other Baroque and classical composers, just like in Europe. I would imagine, therefore, that the 17th and the 18th centuries were the climactic years of music performance in Goa, particularly inside the churches, with liturgies or worship events being backed by well-trained choirs and orchestras, which would add to the solemnity and the religious intensity of the event. Sadly, very little seems to have reached us from those times, particularly in terms of the creativity of the Goan musicians, to the exception perhaps of the musical compositions of the Ladainis or litanies near the village crosses, a tradition that is believed to have begun more than two centuries ago. We now come to the branches of our tree. And since time is running out, I shall have a quick run through the various genres in which Go and Christian musicians have been shining out. By the 19th century, we find an increasing number of Goans composing music, both for the church and for social functions. This is the time when we witness the birth and the growth of the Lenten motet and of the mando and the dulpot. The motet represents Goa's classical Lenten music. It makes its appearance by the middle of the 19th century. The motets were, su were sung on the occasion of the Sanch Pasus, penitential processions during Lent, and also during the sacred triduum 
that is Monday Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday. For more than a hundred years, Goans composed motets only in Latin. There were some verses of the scripture evoking the passion of Christ or moving the singers and the listeners to repentance, sung in four voices to the traditional accompaniment of two violins, two clarinets, and a double bass. As a result of the Second Vatican Council in the 1960s, we have now many motets composed also in the Konkani language. <clears throat> the well-known Mando and the Dulpon make their appearance more or less at the same time. They represent perhaps the finest creation of non-religious Goan song, performed to a stately dance, executed traditionally in a ballroom situation during wedding receptions of the higher social class. We have also the Dekni, the Kunbi songs, the Karvi of Fisherfolk songs, the Harvest songs, all sung to graceful dance steps. The greatly popular Goan Theater makes its debut by the end of the 19th century. It's basically a Konkani drama that is put up on a stage with an indispensable component of songs or kantaram, which have come to enjoy a popularity that no other Goan art song can equal. Thousands of theatres, maybe, have been brought to the stage till today. Multiply them by 12 or 15, and you have an overwhelming number of kantaram that keep bewitching Konkani audiences worldwide till today. This is Konkani pop music for you. Parallel to the Konkani music scene, we have today hundreds of Goan individual singers and pop groups that sing in English and play in restaurants wedding celebrations, and stage shows. Some of them are excellent exponents of jazz, jazz and other popular musical art forms. The Hindi music scene, too, owes a great deal to Goan Christian musicians who have been roped in, in the, <coughs> who have been roped in by the Bali world, if you know what I mean. This contribution of Goa to the English and Hindi-speaking world became, uh, uh, began many decades ago, when students passing out of our scholarship parochiage migrated to other Indian cities and Maharaja courts to direct and perform in those famous musical ensembles, many of them owned by the Indian royalty. When the Portuguese left us in 1961, Almost every village in Goa had its own brass band that played at feasts, theats, etc. All of them were, were hatched in our parish schools. Many bands kept enthralling Goans at wedding receptions and annual balls more than 60, 70 years ago. There were no electronic instruments and microphones then the crooner would bellow out his songs through an acoustic megaphone. These sizable bands were followed by much smaller foursome beat groups, a la Beatles and Shadows. They too had their day. We had said that there were many choirs and orchestras in the 17th and 18th centuries. The second half of the 20th, 20th century saw a kind of a revival of this scene when once again Goan audiences were delighted to attend choral and orchestral stage performances of a number of such ensembles. This trend continues till today as we have a few such groups which, with their elaborate vocal harmonies and orchestral arrangements, continue to offer us world-class programs. Today, once again, almost every church in Goa has a relatively polyphonic choir 
that sings during liturgies to the accompaniment of two or three instrumentalists. The general quality of the interpretation or performance is not the same as three centuries ago, but some revival it is. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to close. We need to recognize that the contributions of Goan Christian musicians have not gone unnoticed on the world stage. Some of their works have been performed in prestigious venues and have earned the accolades and recognition from international audiences and critics alike. In celebrating their achievements today, we not only need to honor their legacy, but also pledge to inspire future generations to continue this proud tradition of musical excellence. The ball is in our court. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Father Joachim Loyola Pereira, for that insightful keynote address. It is always a pleasure to listen to you and to also learn from you. Now, the Thomas Stephens Konkani Kendra has an annual bilingual research bulletin called SOTH. Father Matthew Almeida of the Society of Jesuits, the founding editor of SOTH, published the first issue in the year 2000. This current special edition of SOTH comprises of 25 selected research papers compiled from previous 25 issues of SOTH. The topics of these research papers range from the origin, ethnic identity, and migration of Konkani people to the study of language and literature undertaken by the scholars of Konkani. It also covers various facets of art and culture and history of Konkani. I request His Eminence, Philip Neri Cardinal Ferrand, to kindly release this Silver Jubilee edition of SOTH.